everyone i'm back with another video i know i don't know who i am either um but i have been wanting to do this for a little while now but i just wanted to wait until all of my books came in in my more recent orders today is going to be a mid-november to now ish so like i guess mid-november to december book haul and i just wanted to show you the things that i've accumulated over the last couple of weeks I'm going to categorize this by where I bought the book. So let's start with Barnes & Noble. So I'm a Barnes & Noble like member, so I get like 10% off my entire purchase, so it adds up, you know? Um, so the first book is Six of Crows. Uh, this is a Lee Bardugo book that is literally everywhere. It's all over Bookstagram, it's all over Booktube. One of my good friends, Heather, said this was one of her favorite books when she was younger. And I got this right after I finished Ninth, ha Ninth House. I said that after I finished that book, which was my first Lee Bardugo book, I would finally get into this one. Six of Crows is a heist story that is set in Ketter Dam. Um, yeah, that's kind of all I know about it. From the synopsis, you can tell that there's a convict, a sharpshooter, a runaway, a spy, a heart trender, and a thief. So it's one of those stories where like everybody has a different role and it just sounds like money heist to me. It like reminds me a lot of money heist and I absolutely love that show. I binged that show with my boyfriend over lockdown a couple months ago. I just think that I'm really gonna like this one. The next book that I got actually like two days ago um, is the second book in the Ember and the Ashes series. This one is called A Torch in the Night. Let me tell you how much I love Saba Tahir's writing. I think she is definitely an author that grew on me. When I first started Ember and the Ashes, I was thinking about how I wasn't sure if I was really going to like the book or not but her pacing, her world building, her character development is just really on par with some of the best writers that I know. Everything that makes a fantasy great, like the world building, the dynamic characters, she knows how to do. For anyone who's wondering, I am a Keenan and Laia ship. I am still not sure if it's Leia or Laia. I need to watch more videos hearing what people say, but I've heard both. So I'm not, I'm just not sure. I, I ship Keenan and Laia even though I know they're probably not going to end up together. And I'm on the second book so hopefully I'll get through the series quickly and get to the last book which is, has been com like, has been all over everywhere and see what the hype is about for that one. Um, Sabo Tahir says that that last book in the series is her best piece of work. So I'm just really excited to get into it. I buddy read the first book with my friend Bobsy on Instagram and we just both raved about it like throughout the week. She already had the second book but I didn't have it yet. So I went to Barnes & Noble and got this yesterday and she got the next two books I think yesterday as well. So yeah, you can kind of tell how much we are into this series. So the next four books were my Cyber Monday deals. I don't really quite remember. But I think it was like a 15% off discount um, if you use a certain code. So this book that I got um, that came in yesterday was Homeland Elegies by Ayad Akhtar. It's described in different ways all over the internet. Okay, the thing about me is like I read a synopsis and I read reviews or like posts from other people talking about it and I just completely forget as soon as I stop reading but like I'll I'll put it in my book cart I'll put it in my cart and like end up ordering it but I just forget what it's really about but this one I wanted to pick up because the author is award-winning so it's a story about identity it also says it's an epic story of longing and dispossession in the world that 9-11 made and it also touches on what it's like to live in a post-Trump America so I really want to get into this actually before Biden gets inaugurated I just think the timing right now this book will be really impactful for me so I'm gonna pick this one up soon. So the next book is The People in the Trees by Hanya Yanagihara. This author was uh, the author of A Little Life. This one is her first book. It's about a doctor who visits this remote Micronesian island and he looks for this lost tribe but he encounters forest dwellers who it says have attained a form of immortality that preserves a body but not the mind. And the doctor like figures out how they do this and then he brings it to America and that comes at a terrible cost. So I'm just really excited. It's a story that is about colonialism and anthropology gone wrong. Those two things are like a recipe for really gripping like 
I don't know, I feel like unsettled kind of look. So really excited for this one. So I just wanted to kind of get my feet wet with her first work before I jump into A Little Life. So I have two last books from Barnes & Noble. So I got Homegoing by Ya Jassy and I am so excited for this book. I didn't know that I was that into historical fiction until I read 10 minutes and 38 seconds in The Strange World by Alif Shafak and completely fell in love with it and I've been looking for something with the same vibe. I honestly don't know if this book is gonna have the same vibe, but I've only heard great things. I know it's a multi-generational story. It's about two half-sisters that live in Ghana, and they're both from different villages. One gets married off to an Englishman, the other is sold into slavery, and it kind of follows their parallel lives. And I feel like if I really like this book, I'm really going to enjoy The Vanishing Half, um, because it's also a story about two sisters, and I'm just super, excited for this one um, I have heard like tremendous things about the themes that this author chooses to write about how she writes about it and yeah I'm just really really excited so my last book from Barnes & Noble is The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle and this book I think it's called something else in the UK is it like the seven deaths I don't know why they changed it in the US. I like read this synopsis to my boyfriend and I was like, you, like listen, like this sounds so cool. I have this bad habit of assuming that he'll like certain books and then he just doesn't feel the same way that I do about the books, but I think he's, he would actually really like this one. Basically, this book is about Evelyn Hardcastle who will die every day until Aiden Bishop can identify the person who killed her and break the cycle. So it sounds like a murder time loop, but I could be wrong. So it sounds like thriller with like hints of fantasy, which I am here for. I'm just really, really excited for this one. I'm gonna keep saying that for all these books, but I am genuinely excited about these recent purchases and I know I'm gonna get to them soon. Me telling myself that you need to get to them soon. <laughs> I also wanted to show this like really cute journal that I got at Barnes & Noble. It came in a pack of three. I gave one to my secret Santa and the other to Bobsy, who I'm sending like a little Christmas package to. And look how cute it is. It's like real books. I picked, I picked this one for me because I actually have The Kite Runner and I'm going to read it at some point. I really want to read this one. This has been on my TBR for the longest time. The History of Love, fun fact, was like the first thing that I saved on Goodreads when I first got back into Goodreads this year. This is just really cool and I think what I'm gonna do since I have like a shit ton of journals already that I'm actually like already using, I think I'm gonna plan out like YouTube videos on this for my booktube. So trying to find trying to find uses for my journals is not a easy task. And then the next two books that I want to talk about are my book of the month purchases. So I got two books. The first one is The Office of Historical Corrections and I am so excited for this because I haven't read short stories in like a short story collection in so long. It sounds like it talks a lot about the black American experience and talks about race relations and I don't know it just sounds like really great. Um, I Oh another thing is that the text in this book is ginormous <laughs> for a big ass uh, book that is like bigger than the size of my head the text is huge the other book that i got was in a holidays this book i've kind of trapped myself with for a little bit because it's a obviously a holiday book so i kind of need to get to it this month to be in the mood for it it's a christmas time loop story the main character malin jones just relives the day over and over again and she has to break free of the strange time loop and there are hints of romance it says true love under the mistletoe so i'm just excited because one i've never read christina lauren i know there are two authors that write under the same name and i've also just never i haven't picked up like a holiday read i read a couple holiday reads in on halloween in october but in terms of christmas i've never done that so i'm really excited for this one <laughs> It's like the fifth time. I'm gonna keep a tally of how many times I say I'm so excited. The last two books from this book haul are from World of Books. World of Books is an online website. Um, it's like an online shop that sells a bunch of used books and they, a lot of times they're like still great quality. The books that I got are still pretty great quality. The shipping is free in the United States. I'm not sure if anywhere else if it's free. I think for anyone who's interested in buying like thrifted books online world of books is a really great place a lot of 
their mission is rooted in creating like sustainable opportunities for people to buy books online. So the first book that I got is The Bastard of Istanbul by Elif Shafak and I will never stop talking about Elif Shafak because she's amazing. I don't know why I didn't pick this up sooner. I've been, I saw it all over Barnes and Noble when I first like got into reading again. Yeah, it just sounds like a very eclectic cast of characters. Asia on one rainy afternoon in Istanbul, she walks into a, sur a doctor's surgery and says, I need to have an abortion. It says what happens that afternoon will change her life. Literally the synopsis is just character descriptions of the people in the book. So again, like it sounds like a, a book that has like a really diverse set of characters and it's set in Istanbul. 10 minutes and 38 seconds was set in Istanbul as well. And the way she described the city, I genuinely felt like I was there. I'm not even kidding. And I know that this one will probably, will make me feel the same way. And then the last book that I got at, from World of Books is Station Eleven. And this is a post-apocalyptic slow burn, I'm pretty sure but um, it tells the story of another diverse group of characters, a Hollywood star, his savior, a nomadic group of actors. I've heard really great things. I think on Emily Fox's channel, this was one of the books she recommended for people who want to get into sci-fi. I'm waiting till I'm in a more sci-fi mood because December, I feel like, fantasy is just really going to dominate my reading list. I'm excited for this one and hopefully I will get into sci-fi soon. The last book is from Bookshop and it's The Gilded Wolves. So Bob C speaks really really highly of this book and Roshani Chokshi in general. Um, I'm really excited to read her work because she's Filipino Indian and I'm really curious to see what, how she brings in her culture in any of her books. Um, I know she has a couple out already, uh, several out already, but this one is set in Paris. It sounds like a heist story, 1800s Paris. Sign me up. Like I was in Paris like almost a year ago now, which is so sad to think. But yeah, I got to go to Paris right before coronavirus became a pandemic and I loved my time there. I went with my sister and I just have really great memories there. And I know that like when I read this book, I'm just going to picture in Paris again. Those are all my books that I got from mid-November to now. I know it's a lot. I think these videos will hold me accountable and actually like convince me and like remind me that I have books to read and hopefully I can get to them soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!